So first, I want to thank the Brain and Behavior Research Foundation for supporting my research in the microbiota gut-brain axis and in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. And also to thank, thank you for this opportunity to talk today about why I think pregnancy is such a critical time for us to research. Um, and also, I think, has huge promise for intervening for both mom and baby for their mental health over their lifespan. So those are my disclosures with my funding sources. And so today, we're going to start with talking about antenatal depression, stress, and anxiety, um, and talk about how that can impact uh, when it occurs during pregnancy, how it can impact mom and baby. Uh, then we're going to talk about why I am started pursuing research in the microbiota gut-brain axis and why I propose that we should be looking at it in relation to perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. So we'll look at what is known and some recent findings that I have, um, and then try to bring it back to what my hope is for what this will mean for clinical applications. Uh, so antenatal depression or depression de during pregnancy is common. And shockingly, pregnancy with all its changes is not protective against anxiety and depression. And there are a number of negative outcomes for mom. There's an association with negative birth outcomes. There's an association with increased risk for postpartum depression and all of its impact on both mom and baby, including mom baby's development. And finally, even without postpartum depression, depression and anxiety during pregnancy have been associated with increased risk of the child having ADHD, depression, and psychosis later in life. So we have this connection. We have this, uh, we have this known association. Uh, and in fact, we have increasing evidence of a number of stressors that can occur during pregnancy and seem to be somehow communicated to the baby and can eventually and lead to these adverse outcomes. And we have good evidence at a population level of these. But unfortunately, at an individual level, for any one woman, it's very hard to tell her what the impact will be and how we can, and most importantly, how we can intervene. And in order to do that, we need to be able to look at mechanisms. And so some of the mechanisms that we, will look, we need to look at are endocrine, for example, looking at the hypothalamic pituitary axis and the stress hormones. Uh, looking at inflammation and the role that that plays in the immune system. And I propose the microbiome, which actually I propose also connects with a number of those other systems. So what do we know about the microbiome so far? Well, what we know is that in this study of a general population of pregnant women by Karen et al. from the Ruth Lay group in 2012, they looked at 90 women. And so what you're looking at is a stacked bar chart. And so each of these is an individual woman in the study. And she, they looked at the first trimester compared to the third trimester. And this is the percentage of different bacteria that each individual has. Um, and you can see by the third trimester, there's an interesting change in bacteria. And for example, this red bar becomes more pro predominant, which is proteobacteria, which happens to be a pro-inflammatory bacteria, which is interesting to think about as the third trimester is thought to become a more pro-inflammatory state in preparation for pregnancy, for delivery. And then we also know from this animal study that stress during pregnancy changed the vaginal microbiota composition. And finally, we have studies in animals that have shown that certain bacteria associate with increased depressive and anxiety behaviors. And similarly, actually other bacteria seem to decrease it, even to the level of using, for example, an SSRI. And the mechanism also seems to be related one of the mechanisms seems to be related to stress reactivity in corticosteroids. We have very little studies in humans. There are two small studies in a general population comparing uh, samples, and there does seem to be a difference in composition between those with depression, major depression, and those without. But as of yet, even though we have this kind of evidence that in pregnancy things may be changing, um, and we have evidence that depression and anxiety are important, um, may be related to the microbiome. We yet to do not understand how this may be related in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders. And furthermore, we have this study here shows that they took uh, offspring of stress pregnancies and non-stress pregnancies and found that there was a change in gut microbial composition um, and that that associated with increased anxiety-like behavior. And so, it does seem, in some way, that the bacteria is, that 
there is a form of communication or change in the microbial uh, bacteria. And, whether, and so one way might be at birth, the direct transfer. Um, however, we also, there is be becoming more of a discussion about whether there could even be transfer during pregnancy. So when I was early in training, I was taught that the uterus and the amniotic sac were both sterile environments. There's now, I, albeit controversial data, but data that shows that even a healthy placenta and a healthy amniotic sac may have its own microbiome. But I think even regardless of that, there's clearly metabolites of the maternal microbiota, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, but metabolites that may be a form of communication from mom to baby, as well as effects on the maternal systems that's also a form of communication between mom and baby and affecting baby's development in preparation for the world that the baby's going into. So, uh, so to, in order to start studying this, I had a feasibility study where I recruited 30 women and followed them through pregnancy and postpartum. And I gathered, I did a structured clinical interview of DSM diagnoses uh, to determine uh, whether they had history of depression, history of anxiety. Um, and then I looked at depressive and anxiety symptoms and a clinical interview throughout, as well as gathering samples to do microbial composition utilizing 16S sequencing. And so this is a feasibility study, so these are small numbers, but I really wanted to use it more to illustrate what is possible. So you can see here that this is my 30 women, and you have here, I ordered them by those with no history of depression. I did have a number of women with a history of depression, and this is their samples from the first or second trimester. And you can see here that each, there's a diverse mix of different, uh, mix of there is a diverse mix of bacteria. Um, there is certainly these two kind of predominant ones, which are Firmicutes and Bacteroidetes, which are common uh, ones for humans, for adult humans. But I also want to point out this dark blue bar, which actually is proteobacteria. So it begs the question for me when I look at this is, if a woman already has increased proteobacteria in the first or second trimester, what does that mean for her pregnancy? And does that associate, for example, in anxiety and depressive symptoms? And then here, I've, one other tool that we use is uh, looking at beta diversity, and that's a tool to be able to try to look at the differences between samples. And so we have looked at uh, those in the third postpartum, looking at samples, and here is, uh, this, is the, the 30, this is the 30 women, and you can see I've organized them by those with low anxiety and those with higher anxiety. And this is the, uh, uses a measure called the Bray Curtis uh, dissimilarity, which really looks at dissimilarity. So zero really means that there is no um, differences, and one means that there is a lot of differences. And you can see the pink dots, they're really all over the place, and there's a lot of dissimilarity. And that's actually what we would expect, that we think about what our bacteria, I propose, is really a very individual biomarker of, a, of us. You know, it's certainly impacted by our individual immune system. It actually helped develop our immune system. It's part of our stress system. It's impacted by who we live with, where we live, whether we have a dog. So there are all these different factors. And, but you can see, and again, small numbers, but um, that in those with higher anxiety, that they're getting closer together and their samples are closer together in the types of bacteria they have. And I think this, the best example of that is C. difficile, where C. difficile becomes the predominant bacteria, and so everyone with C. difficile, their gut bacteria begin to look very similar. But I think that's only going to be a piece, and I really think in order for us to use this in a meaningful way, we have to be able to look at this in relation to these other systems, and that's both to understand for mom, and then also to understand how it can be transferred from mom to baby. And in particular, I'm, actually, I'm interested in first looking at the cortisol and stress reactivity and looking actually at tryptophan. And interestingly, a lot of our tryptophan comes from our diet, and serotonin is actually more predominant in our gut than anywhere else. So for my NARSED Young Investigator project, I am following women during pregnancy and postpartum, and I'm also looking at the microbial composition, gut microbial composition of the babies. And then I'm looking at stress reactivity of mom and baby and, get, and 
also collecting uh, serum samples so that I can look at metabolites such as tryptophan. So let's bring it back to how I might use this as the, uh, in my work as the medical director of UNC's perinatal psychiatry inpatient unit, where I care for many, I have the privilege of caring for many different women dealing with depression, anxiety, severe depression, anxiety, uh, and things like postpartum psychosis. And so we have, this might be a, a typical woman that I take care of, and you can see all these different factors that probably relate to her depressive episode. And we have very good techniques, including interpersonal psychotherapy, uh, that we can individualize. But at the biological level, I often struggle with how I can best help women. Um, and that, you know, we have medicines that help, but those medicines are really blunt tools, and it's hard to tell any one woman what part of her depression is her immune system, what part is her stress system, and I think the gut microbial give, composition gives us a window into each individual person and sort of a biomarker of whether there is dysbiosis or whether there is imbalance. And also, by understanding it in relation to these other systems, I think it will help us better understand all these factors and be able to use them to figure out in more personalized treatments. And actually, the best example of that, in a paper in 2015 by Nevi et al., they actually looked at microbial composition and they look, combine that with machine learning in a model with clinical factors to look at predicting glucose response to foods, uh, which is an important predictor of diabetes. And then they were, and it's a really elegant study where they did that, then they were able to actually use that model to predict in a new group of people the glucose response. And then they did a further study where they actually developed inter, individual diets for, for the people in this, for individuals in the study and compared those diets with those of, you know, of, uh, in, a controlled, in a controlled study and were able to see that they could, in fact, make a difference utilizing this information from the microbiome along with clinical factors. So I, I believe that we can do that also in, for perinatal uh, mood and anxiety disorders. Thank you.